Okay, hello. Welcome viewers, new and old, to... <laughs> uh, yeah, that again. Well, let's just start off with the question. How much do you think that someone in need of emergency housing should pay weekly for that accommodation? Because, bear in mind, they're in need of an emergency accommodation, and that would mean a variety of different things, from whether the council screwed them over and they owe them a duty to rehome them, or they can't afford to get accommodation, and they're in a situation where the council has to rehome them, etc, etc. So, how much do you think per week someone like that is in no situation to pay, should pay for weekly accommodation? Okay, now a bit of history if you haven't watched all the other videos, right, so I'll try and be as brief as possible, but <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, so I'm sure you're saying, so, yeah, I look forward to seeing what comments you actually put to see how much you think would be a fair rate for someone of a situation needing emergency accommodation should have to pay per week for said accommodation, but brief history, right. Uh, Council wanted proofs of work for working one weekend at a festival, which I provided, and then they wanted five wage slips, where only two were possible, so I provided them. Now, in hindsight, they said these proofs were never even required, not even the two, which they lost on multiple occasions, and you sent them through the post, they lose them, you take them into the council offices, they lose them, they, <laughs> yeah ridiculous situation, they just constantly lost the proofs, and these were never required, as has been said in email since, so what's going on there? And then there was, right, so nine months of benefit delays until I lost my home and all that, until they paid some of the rent, not all of it, and you know, by then it was too late, my home had already been repossessed for two months. Now, five months before they paid, I went in with the proof again, and also bank statements and showing that I was on the benefit, and also a statement saying, well, hey, they're repossessing my home for non-payment of rent. And then they said that this was just in time to start payments. And again, for those five months, which they eventually pays, they didn't pay until five months later, which is ridiculous. And through that five months, there was obviously constant efforts by myself and the housing association to get them into payments and they ignored all that. There were three fresh benefit applications during that time which were unnecessary according to the council but still they ignored all three. They did not pay the due benefits. So yeah I lost my home because of their fuckery. There's no other term for it. It's fuckery because the council were deliberately fucking it up. And okay since then I've attempted every single way to try and get rehomed and Firstly, they don't accept applications via email, and then they don't accept applications while you're staying on someone's sofa for a couple of weeks, you know, it's not permanent enough residence to accept an application, so I ended up stuck on my own sofa out in the middle of the countryside where there's absolutely no transportation and it does my head in. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, application after application, they lost, and then they finally get an application and then they want proofs. Now, with the paperwork that I got here, it took them two days to send that through the post from the marks date on it, and every other time they've wanted proofs with such a short time limit, it's like a 30 day time limit to get the proofs, they've arrived 16 or 17 days after the date that apparently it was sent, so I don't know, it sat in the office for a couple of weeks or something before they decided to send it? very strange, and when you try to email anyone on the council, you either get the incorrect departments, or the councils, or just plain their response, and then eventually when the LGO got involved, it took them at least 35 to 40 days between each and every single response, so they dragged it out as long as they could. And from then, there were different things. So there was at least five different applications with them losing proofs, with them going over oh, the proofs are now too late, even though you sent them the exact day that you got the thing requesting the proofs, and then you send the original proofs and fresh applications for a recorded delivery, which they then lose completely, even though you got proof by Royal Mail that it was delivered and signed for, and oh no, this thing never arrives. 
So yeah, five applications later, still nothing. And then they did promise to add me to the housing register. And we're like, we'll add you to the housing register if you want. And I, yeah. And then another couple of months later, of me saying, well, why haven't you added me to the housing register? Another application. Five years again. And so the next application, another couple of months later, because obviously you take that long to figure out that they haven't got it, because that's how long they take to fucking respond to you via email. <laughs> Um, so yeah, another application is um, taken in by hand, and you get it stamped and everything. And another couple of months of arguing every single month with them, still through the LDO and online. And, you know, it takes over a month to get a single response. So yeah, they still haven't done it, and it's like, okay then, well, I've handed this in by hand. I scanned it in and sent it via email. That's when they actually start to process it like two months after it's been done and it's like well look I've got proof that I handed this one in by hand so I've got no excuse of losing it now through the post so you know you can't say that even though it's been delivered via recorded delivery that you've lost it because it's got your cancel stamp on it you've got it in the system somewhere and so yeah they finally they backdate it so it takes over a month apparently for that letter to come through and like oh yeah we'll keep pretend we've actually been doing it from the time bullshit were you <laughs> Um, yeah, and then you get the thing, and it's like, oh, well, you're outside of the criteria for local housing, and yeah. Basically, they waited for the exact date for me to fall outside of living three out of the past five years in Birmingham, so they could deny me the local housing connection and give me four points and go, well, look, we did give you points, we did add you to the register, yeah. Many, 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 many months later, after you promised, when you waited for me to fall outside of that criteria, it's like, it's outside now. Now we'll accept this. Yes, now he's outside of the criteria after five years. Now we'll accept that proof. It's like, what the fuck is going on? And then, you know, send proof of that, and they ignore that email, and then they wait six months, and then it's like, obviously I've still been arguing with them for them six months. Six months later, you get a thing to the post to say, well, can you prove that you're still within the local connection? It's like, well, you've waited for six months to make sure that I'm definitely outside of it now, haven't you? So, bullshit to that. <laughs> so, yeah, the LGO finally does a bit of something and says that they have to give me emergency accommodation. So, yeah, how much do you think an emergency accommodation would take? Bear in mind that the average for the local housing allowance rates for a one bedroom flat based upon the average of all the prices including the cheaper council ones is 97 pounds something or other hmm. basically it expects me to pay out of my own pocket now in my situation <laughs> utterly utterly ridiculous 164 pounds 61 per week knowing that no one in need of emergency accommodation could do that. That's 23 hours on the national living wage just to get that paid. <laughs> Bullshit. I mean, if I had £164.61 to spend on a week, I would easily have a luxury flat in Birmingham. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> that is almost the LHA rate for a four-bedroom house. A four-bedroom house you can get for that. And that emergency accommodation that's deemed reasonable. Not only that, they have also stated this was sent very late in the day when there was ten minutes until the last buzz, not enough time to pack up anything. And it was, yeah, if you don't accept this today, we'll just waive liability for ourselves, you know. We don't have liability, so we own you then if you don't accept this. Oh, it's perfectly reasonable, so you have no reason to refuse this. Bullshit, is it reasonable? <laughs> You've deliberately made it so expensive, it's not reasonable. You know, I was thinking, oh, thank God, finally I can get back to Birmingham. Nope, they've, of course, gone into major fuckery. You know, what other way can they fuck it up? Oh, well, we'll offer what we've been told we have to offer. We'll just, we won't make it reasonable. We won't make it so you can accept it in any way, shape or form. No, we'll make it as unreasonable as possible and fuck you over even more. So, yeah, they continue the fuckery. <laughs> it's... Not on. It's not on at all. How can they expect someone in that situation to 
pay £164.61, which is 23 hours on the £7.20 an hour national living wage. It's more for other <laughs> incomes. Uh, it's utterly, utterly ridiculous that they can expect someone who is in need of emergency housing to even afford that out of their own pocket per week. No assistance. <coughs> I'm just flabbergasted. Right, so this SORP, which is the Senior Officer Review Panel, took into account that they fucked everything over, <laughs> and current procedures and precedent sets failure to follow their own procedures the supply and demand of information because yeah they don't really supply any information they didn't really say oh well, you can apply to this you can apply to that and do this and that and fucked it over in all ways shapes and forms prevention of homelessness well it is the opposite of that didn't they loss of previous sanity due to a benefit error I think it was more than an error that was nine fucking months. No, bullshit, blah, 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 fuck you. And you won't accept your fucking benefits claims and all this, and it's like, well, I've given you all the proofs you want, and you lose them, and even when I provide them, you know. It's like, well, what the fuck do you expect me to do? And it's like, proofs that weren't even required, they've stated in hindsight. And have they done anything to do with that? No. Compensation already paid. What compensation? I've not received a fucking penny. You offered £250 for ruining four years of my life and stealing all of my possessions, like all my furniture, fridge freezer, washer dryer, cooker, all of that. £250 doesn't even pay for that, let alone make up for the four years of my life that they ruined. Bullshit. <laughs> has any compensation been paid? The decision has been made to award 100 managing points on the basis of incorrect assessments of your housing application regarding less preference due to no local connection. Well, they not only did that, they didn't actually score it correctly. They just scored 40 points, less 90% to make it 4, which was bullshit. I mean, they just said that that was due to overcrowding. They haven't scored it in any way, shape or form possible. So if they're adding 100 points to it, they should actually score my housing application properly and give me the two points. And the fact that they fucked me around for so long, I think that they should up those points even further and just basically make sure that I get back to her. Because for fuck's sake, <laughs> it takes the piss right now. <laughs> Yeah, and um, Peter Hayes CDE is not the one that did that, but the name seems familiar as being involved in some way. She was Tracy Knowles. But, uh, fuck's sake, all the fuckery that the council have been doing is ridiculous. I, uh, and they can get away with it, because they're the government. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the situation. <laughs> I would have gone on more about the government and the Conservatives and all that and all this shit that they going through and the <laughs> racist Prime Minister, quite frankly, who had to go the um, UKIP party saying, oh, don't vote for them because they're racists when they just want to leave Europe. That was the only remotely racist thing. You know, everything else is for poor people and <laughs> benefits and all that and young people and anything good so there were a lot of good things which I mentioned in the other video no we've got racist Prime Minister Hitler who wants to basically shut down the EU oh he pretends he protests that he's not into that and he goes when confronted about Google profits oh fucking migrants <laughs> and it's like what the fuck you know he's you're asked about profits I was watching Deep Space Nine and Quark going on about the Ferengi and our great fires of profits with all of the tiny little profit trees that could have grown to great potential and been profit forests burnt down and killed in their prime. It strikes me as our Prime Minister, he seems like the Ferengi in a lot of ways. He only really cares about the profits. Oh, those poor dying profits, but no, oh, people. He's been quoted as saying the hated the much-hated um, Human Rights Act, so, you know, he clearly hates humans and he really doesn't care for benefits payments and people in need and doesn't want to do anything to create jobs, oh no, let 
lo and behold, you actually does that or makes companies do things to employ people? No, it's all down to people that <laughs> are claiming benefits while desperately trying to look for work. Oh yeah, they really need punishing further. So yeah, I think this country's rather fucked up right now and I'm not going to go into it anymore because my God, <laughs> oh, sick of being fucked with. Yeah. <laughs>